the U.S. has uh, proposed a law that seeks to punish African countries cooperating with Russia. Is the U.S. making Africa a theater of its contest with Russia? No. I mean, in one sense, we have to acknowledge that Africa has always been the theater of uh, international uh, uh, intrigue and conquest going back centuries, and there's no uh, reason to see the situation now as different from what it was 20 years ago or 50 years ago or 150 years ago, in that uh, the global powers often operate in the African space uh, with disrespect for what the Africans want. So there's a history there, and I'm, I'm very cognizant of it. Um, but this bill is not about sanctioning countries. It's not about uh, reigniting the Cold War. Um, if you get past the preambular language, which is what most of the media accounts are talking about, and you look at this bill, which is not a law yet, but you look at the bill, um, it's talking about Russian mercenaries and Russian war criminals. Uh, and it instructs the State Department to do a 180-day review, a six-month review, to see how to counter them, both through positive actions, increased foreign assistance and other types of aid, uh, and by sanctions if uh, there's crimes going on. And Meeks, in his statement, uh, the sponsor of the bill, only referred to Mali and um, and Central African Republic, where we've had recent massacres involving Russian mercenaries. Uh, uh, and there's also been references to Russian oligarchs uh, who operate in the African space trading right. uh, uh, use of, of these uh, uh, military actors in exchange for access to minerals. So we're talking about crimes. We're talking about plundering African resources in ways against African interests. It's not about sanctioning countries that trade with Russia, uh, either in in the body of the text or in the intent. So, okay, you see that video there. You see, you see, America is targeting Africa. Ah, uh, because Africa is developing on so many levels. And according to them, Russia and China have spent billions of dollars in Africa, the continent. All America do for Africa and Europe is send aid. Um, Africa don't say they don't want no aid. We don't want aid. We, don't, we need trade. We need partners. So, no, they want to punish Afri Africa because Africa, they don't know that they, they no longer have a grip on Africa like they used to. Because with China spending billions of dollars in Africa in infrastructure, developing roads, hotels, electrical, um, electrical hubs, um, factories for for um for refining oil and all of this, and then no, they, they he's saying they want to use the um. Now, before I go there, also, the French, Mali just put the French out of Africa. And a few other countries in Africa tell the French leave, so they're leaving. So with all this happening, it's pissing off America because South Africa is in bricks with Russia. And they are trading. And other African countries like Ghana, well, not Ghana, but other African countries, Zimbabwe and Nigeria now, Algeria, Nairobi, and those countries are trading with Russia. But now they are putting this, the pass in the Congress, as he said, but it is going to, going to, it's going to go to the Senate now. So they are one of the, they're going to use this bill now to bully Africa into not to do work with Russia. That's all this is about. It's about punishing Africa because of South Africa did a military drill with, with Russia and China recently, and Africa. No, not Africa. America tell them the, the, the Secretary of State, which is Blink, he went to South Africa trying to convince South Africa don't do no um don't join military exercise with Russia and because they go ahead with it, they threaten South Africa with sanctions while they were there in Africa. So Africa said you can't tell we're a sovereign state, a democracy, so you can't come and tell us who to do trade with and who not to do trade with while you only give us aid, you don't trade with us. So this new narrative there, there is to scare Africa, and I hope African presidents don't take this on because we have been under the thumb of the West for, for decades. But now we have emerging economies in Africa that's growing rapidly. So we don't need no aid and no help from the US anymore. So they're losing their grip on the continent, and they're losing all that resources that Africa has. And the French are also losing their grip because they're getting put out of Africa. On a massive scale militarily, they don't, they don't want to help from them anymore. And with China back in Africa, they're becoming, we are becoming, um, Africa is becoming strategic and they're becoming um, a hub for 
everything that's good right now with tourism with and right now um which country it is i'm um, from country i forget which african country now just just starting to starting to trade with in wheat isn't it in all of africa so again we're bypassing america and growing on our own with africa no our own we're growing with china and with um and it's pissing them off but let's continue with this video Professor Lawrence, we're going to get an understanding of what exactly um, uh, that law says and the interpretation of the others. But first, um, uh, Professor Deputy Rev, let me get your view on this, though. I would say that uh, I would place uh, the contest not in, uh, you know, U.S.-Russia contest as uh, during previous bipo uh, bipolarity. But now we have new bipolarity, uh, Western countries and non-Western countries. Um, and um, I would say that uh, during the last years, uh, Western uh, structural power in Africa uh, is being questioned by emerging countries, including Russia, uh, especially in security sphere. Uh, and we would say that non-Western countries were rather successful in such countries like Mali, Chad, and some others. Um, but uh, we were successful in the traditional security spheres. French uh, uh, military troops uh, left Mali right. and are living from uh, Central Africa. But uh, now what, what we see, U.S. and other countries, right, they are very strong in uh, working with uh, civil society. So it's not a traditional, uh, you know, security issues. Uh, and they want to boost this uh, civil society. Right, in order to uh, to make anti-Russian sentiment among uh, African population. Uh, so as I said, the professor said there, they are trying to push this anti-Russian narrative in Africa, telling African nations, Russia is the big bad wolf. Don't work with Russia. Don't trade with Russia. Don't do anything for Russia. While America have been um, reaping the benefits of African nations for decades. With the French, with the French, then because I said Mali just put the French out of military, just telling them get out of get out of Mali. So that is they're losing their grip on the continent. So, to so now they are trying to um scare Africa into not doing trade with Russia or doing anything at all with Russia, military wise, trade wise, or whatever. And China, because they're still having this talking about China in this with the the debt trap. Narrative they are pushing. So they're pushing two narratives in Africa right now as a continent. The dead trap and Russia is no good for you. Russia is um you have to be anti-Russia. And then because again, with the help of these two countries, Africa have been growing infrastructure-wise. And all America do, as I said earlier, is send aid. We don't need no aid. We need aid to do. You understand the Red Cross who come and Collect all these billions of dollars from 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 donations all over the world, and then pocket the money, and then don't help the continent. So let me let's listen to some more of the video, and then can't continue. Coffee, let me get your thoughts. The U.S. is literally at war um, with Africa by having this bill that supposedly has already passed Congress, and hopefully it's making its way to becoming a bill when it's signed by the president. Now, there's very important issues to take into account. It's not just to say we need to get past the language. Language is a very important expression of what we feel about something. And in this case, what is supposed to be a law later, make sure that those Africans who are dealing with Russians will be punished. Let's not be uh, sort of very diplomatic about the language. The bill is very clear. I mean, it is saying anybody doing business with a Russian business people, Africans will be in trouble. And if you want to couch this in a different language, I would say no. The reason why SADC leaders, African leaders in the Southern African development communities have now voiced their concern is because of the consequences of that bill. Anybody can argue any other way. I mean, first of all, why even have a special bill against Africans doing business with Russians? Why not have a bill against Europeans doing business with Russians when we know there's plenty of Europeans are doing business with Russians. So here I agree with the, the, the guy in Johannesburg. This is all about bullying, controlling. We're talking about um, Russia and um, the Russian militant coming and, and pillaging Africa. No. Where did they get this from? Which 
Africa have been doing this. I mean, America have been doing this for decades in Somali, Libya. Look what they did to Libya. America decimated Libya. All the pretense of, um, of God of being a terrorist. While, and the only reason was because of the golden air currency that God was trying to implement. That's why they killed Gaddafi. They had nothing to do with um, terrorists. So Africa, so Africa, whenever Africa to try to rise up, they come to America sanctioning, putting in, um, well, sanction mostly is what they do to, uh, to Africa, sanctioning the country. But it is not going to work now because with South, with South um, Africa in BRICS and I know a lot of African countries are coming together, working together on a whole, like trading with each other now. So we don't need the West as much as we used to because we no longer need aid and that's what they used to use to hold African countries. It's sending aid, not trade, not um, working with them as a, as a partner, aid. So this is where Af America is going to go. Dumb because America have bullied so many countries and sanctioned so many countries over the years. They don't have much allies right now. And even their own allies are turned against them. Look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia literally turning back again, turning back with to America. And Turkey did the same thing recently. Um, Venezuela did the same thing because they tried to get some oil from Venezuela and Venezuela tell them no, nope, not gonna happen. So Africa now they wanna use Africa as a Trojan horse to control Russia, but it's not gonna work. Cause I can you can see it from a mile away what they're trying to do. With this law that they pass and they're, oh they're gonna be a six month period they can come. No. They're gonna use this law as a, a bully, a bullying tactic, and as and with, um, along with sanctions. But I want Africa to come together and start and start to use like East Africa is trying to implement the one currency and the free um, trade and border and um, borderless Africa and East. So if that happens, then the currency will get stronger because all the countries are using the one currency. And they have oil and and gold to back it because um, Ghana is producing oil, Nigeria and a couple other countries are producing oil, but not as much. But with the gold for oil initiative that Ghana does implement, they are buying gold from directly from Saudi Arabia with gold, which is a plus. And Zimbabwe does implement a gold denier, a gold coin currency. They're gonna use as trade, sorry, as trade. So America is worried and they are panicking. So they are lashing out, but let's see how long it lasts. Let's continue the video. Uh, Professor Deputy Ref, is that your understanding as well, that, that it does not touch on matters of trade, that it is only about mercenaries? Objective number one is about uh, openness and open society. Objective number two is uh, democracy and security dividends. Once again, if you are, you are in, in the street of Bamako, it is very much anti-French, anti right? And a little bit pro-Russian. And they, uh, they want just to change this uh, um, spirit, right, of uh, Malians, right, to make it more uh, like uh, anti-Russian, anti right, and pro-Western. For right. this, they will give, like, small grants to civil society, uh, to small businesses, innovative businesses, etc., etc., right? So let and me rope they, in. they will work mostly in Bamako. All yeah. right, let me rope in coffee here, because, uh, coffee. you know, the U.S. clearly knows that it is not a single or neutral actor in, the, in Africa. Is the U.S. now using bully tactics to get Africa to pick a side in its geopolitical fight? Yes, indeed. I think the bill itself really gives that feel, not just the feel, but the evidence that the U.S. is struggling to assert its influence. Not only that by proxy France, uh, written a tons of stuff about that. The French are losing an enormous amount of reputational capital on the continent. Uh, you know, beside the old the terrible colonial uh, out, outcomes and all the things they've done, they haven't been able to really uh, uh, capitalize on the uh, sort of post-colonial dividend. And Africans are now asking a lot of questions. And one of their biggest partners is the United States. So what that bill is doing, the bill is very clear. You know, there's no confusion about this. It's going to be passed over. There's, you know, large... Uh, uh, gathering support on both sides in the United States. The context is saying, you know, ma countering malign Russian activities in Africa. That's the context here. It's not in Europe. It's not in Asia. It's nowhere else. So that makes it, context governs meaning, clearly. So that meaning is that African doing business with Russians, it's not just malign Russian activities. These Africans will be also in trouble. We know that. 
by associations, Africans will pay a large price. Why would the U.S. do that to Africa right. when it's got a problem to deal with with Russia? Deal with Russia. So in short, Africa now is sl slowly being transformed into a theater of engagement between Russia, between the United States and its enemies being China or Russia. And by proxy, Africans are caught in the middle. And saying that it's not yet clear that it's going to have an impact on Africans, I'm afraid to say no. It will have a terrific and detrimental impact on business in Africa. So, yeah, as, as I was in the video, as I said there, so you have European countries that's threatening with Russia currently, heavily, but they're not talking about sanctioning or passing any law to stop or intervene with these European countries doing business with Russia. Why is it only Africa? They're targeting. I know how law is. Whenever law is implemented, there's always amendments to go further, do further things. Africans were stuck in Ukraine. Did anybody evacuate them? No. You know how badly they was treated in Ukraine, but nobody gonna want to come and tell Africans they must um, be for Ukraine when they didn't. They they they, they treat Africans so bad in in Ukraine. Come on, it's not. It's ridiculous. And this narrative they're trying to trying to portray that is 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 mercenaries. Russian mercenaries is who is the one who is coming to African borders and doing these damages, which is ridiculous. That's just a um, that's just ridiculous. That's just something they're using as an excuse to just mess up Africa. The continent, kind of send it back a couple of years, economically wise. That's the whole deal with this thing. It's, it's not enough to do it now. They want to help Africa. They want to aid it. They have nothing to do with that because again. They only send aid. That's it. That's it. America don't never have money to help Africa. Do no infrastructure work. It's only about aid. It's just recently, since Russia and China spending billions of dollars, over three hundred and three hundred billion dollars in Africa, is now. I think recently the the EU, EU tried to give three billion to Africa to do some project, but for decades they never did this, right? And the African Union, I hope the African Union, they're gonna have a meeting. A summit in December, but that's too far. Because this law is gonna come out just now. So I hope these the African Union come together and put a strong voice against this stupid um invasive tactics America is using when it comes to a sovereign state, a sovereign country. So uh, Professor Lawrence, w w what sort of impact do you see this having um, in Africa? Because, you know, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken did say in South Africa recently that Sub-Saharan Africa is a major geopolitical force. W what kind of impact do you see, you know, uh, that bill having on the continent? Well, that remains to be seen. And, 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 and my, my colleague has said it's, we've gone from the language is clear to context governs meaning. Uh, now, the the, conflict, the context does really matter. The, over two centuries of, of foreign meddling in Africa in, in all kinds of ways that we can agree on. Uh, and there is this specter of the Cold War um, uh, hovering over this. But don't forget, the Russia disinformation, which is very much affecting the discussion of this bill, is massive. If you go to Bamako right now, it's all Russian bots, Russian trolls, you know, Russian... Uh, misinformation, uh, trying to get Malians to turn against themselves. And that works in U.S. elections, in European elections, uh, and all over the African continent, the misinformation. And part of the goal of this bill is to address misinformation, not through sanctions, uh, but to help strengthen uh, uh, resilience of institutions, including media institutions, against the misinformation. Now, the impacts uh, won't be for, you know, another year or so. Uh, and the impacts all depend on what report the State Department gives and the recommendations it gives to Congress. And then Congress will try to uh, fund those programs to counter the malign activities of Russia, not all activities of Russia, not all economic activities of Africans, but anything the Russians are doing that is against international law and against international norms on the continent. And I would expect this to be very targeted. So targeted towards a company, for right. example, that works with the Wagner Group or, or, or a politician that works with uh, a Russian uh, 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 entity that's involved in Ukraine. Uh, those types of very targeted sanctions, not blanket sanctions against Africa or anything like that. All right. I, I do want to hear from you, uh, though, Coffee, because even as Anthony Blinken says that, uh, you know, uh, sub-Saharan Africa is a major geopolitical force, though, are African voices, though, heard? 
in such issues such as who to trade with, for instance, where to place the sanctions, you know, who to you know, agree with bilaterally, for instance, are Africa's voices heard? Is Africa really a force here? No, I mean, so far, the Africans are struggling to be able to muster a force. I mean, if you took the, uh, the, the, the communique that was issued last week by the, the Southern African Development Community leaders, it was really, while it was really, you know, very significant, it's just a communique. There's nothing clear about what are they going to do about it. Are they lobbying in Washington? Are they, are they asking for a specific thing through the African Union with uh, uh, Maki Sal, who's a heading a chairperson of the African Union? And, and in fact, most of you already know that uh, uh, coming in December, there will be a U.S.-Africa summit. But before, we can't wait for this to happen. You need to have a lobbying people make their voices heard, not just on the African continent through a piece of paper, but a very concerted effort to make the Americans understand that these kind of bills that are supposedly going to be a, a law is a form of, in fact, I would say, I would call it a form of aggression towards Africans who are now going to have to scramble to figure out how do we do business with Russia or anybody else? So every time, by extension, the United States comes out with its own law, it's sort of the law is reaching out much farther, way beyond the United States, to tell anybody by aggression you can't do this because if you did this, this is what's gonna to happen to you. And Africans are rightly so to be concerned because we know these bills sometimes, not just they, they, they become uh, something by, uh, they become law, but there's always an evolution in this, this, this kind of bills and laws. Right. We've seen what happened to Libya, you know, from saying we're gonna have a no-fly zone to a bombing, you know, campaign to destroy Libya, kill right. Muhammad Gaddafi. People are concerned that this might be the same. And I can tell you, it will be the same because one is for sure the continent, as uh, everybody's noticing, is becoming a very important playground for the world tomorrow. So how do Africans with their voices, talking to Washington, making their voices known as well, make sure that this bill doesn't become law? Oh. It's a bad idea. Hey, all right, that's it. So I hope I learned something. You can go and finish. Um, you can look this up online and you'll find it in different different areas where they're talking about this thing right now. So hope you learn something as always. That's my goal to bring knowledge to the to the Caribbean diaspora, the American American African American diaspora as well and the African continent because CNN and Fox News don't show these things. All these things are hidden in the background to to not and then they then they're gonna paint this narrative that Africa is the big bad um wolf and corrupt and all because they are doing but they are in now doing things to paint africa in a bad light and other and, and um, russia and china and so they been all these other countries where they, they, they are always targeting so you don't know thanks for watching this is the washington ssn podcast don't forget to like share, comment subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend you don't know peace one love boom